Hello boys and girls, we finally got some stuff to unbox today, and uh, it's a whole bunch of big ones here, so oh boy. Um, well first of all, let's just knock a few easy ones out of the way that came in these past few days. First up, um, we already saw Seven Psychopaths, but boom, we got the slipcover now. Because um, I had ordered that separately, because this one hadn't come with it, so yeah, look how much nicer that looks. Um, in my last video, I talked about Shadow People a little bit. Um, I want to watch this movie again, because I haven't watched it in a long time, but as I already mentioned, I did see a real Shadow person, so please watch that video if you haven't already. Um, and then, got two shark films for you to finish up these respective series, Jaws the Revenge and The Last Sharknado, It's About Time. Uh, very eager to check these out. I know that this one has Michael Caine's magical self-drying shirt, and this one yeah, has time travel, because of course it does. Um, you know, the Sharknado series, I just adore it. Um, and then, very, very, very special mention um, to this film, uh, Blood of the Mummy. What is so special about this film? Well, I'm in it. That's right. I have an acting part in this. I... Uh, there's a scene in a mental uh, a mental institution where I play a mental patient who's wearing a pink bathrobe and holding two pink unicorns. So, you know, typecasting as always. But yeah, this film, um, you can find it on Walmart. I'll, uh, I'll, on their website, I'll leave the link to it below. But please um, purchase it, give it some love. Um, it's from uh, Sick Chick Flicks. Um, it's a production company of like female-led horror filmmakers so in the North Carolina area so please uh, give them some love and I can't wait to actually see myself in the film and I'll be able to talk about it further okay so let's dive into what came today first up this looks like it's slipcover shaped I want to say and it is from um, well it says Royal Mail so it looks like yeah um, I think it's Great Britain and it's not slipcover shaped, um, or it is, but it's not a slipcover. What is it? It is, um, okay, good. Um, it is, uh, All Girls Weekend, um, and, uh, this film, this is, I'm doing all my shout-outs today from people I know. Uh, this is, uh, another film from, uh, Lou Simon, and we looked at her, uh, her movie 3, uh, both on DVD and on Blu-ray. And I, of course, kept the Blu-ray. Um, this is a German release of her film. Um, and this film was another, um, you know, indie horror production, uh, all-female-led. And um, it uh, takes place with these girls uh, going into the woods for an all-girls weekend, kind of a retreat. And, um, you know, they get lost. And it, it has a little bit of Blair Witch to it, except it's not found footage. Um, and it's got uh, Katie Carpenter in it. It's got, you know, a whole bunch of good emerging uh, female um, horror stars, as well as Lou Simon, who's making a name for herself in the horror genre. I love the poster there. Another reason why I wanted to get on Blu-ray, aside from it, well, being on Blu-ray, but also um, the fact that I think the poster here is a lot better than the DVD artwork, but... Um, I will leave a link in the description to the DVD that you can more readily find on Amazon unless you want to go on eBay and track down the Blu-ray like I did, uh, but you'd have to have a region-free player to do it. Um, but yeah, shout out to the stars of that film. Now this one is from, uh, I think it's, I want to say it's Naples, Florida, but I, uh, I don't know. Um, it's hard to read. Anyway, um, what have we got here? We got uh, we got uh, X Men: uh, Days of Future Past, the Rogue Cut, and uh, I have not watched the Rogue Cut, but I do have the um, I do have Days of Future Past, the um, the theatrical cut in 4K. I do have that. Um, the person told me that it came with the slipcover, but it doesn't seem like it does, so that's disappointing. Um, but anyway, it is a great film, probably the best X-Men film, so I'll be curious to see what all the Rogue Cut has in store. Um, we got um, Brooklyn, New York. So, 
Does it indeed go hard? We're gonna find out. Um, Alright, and then it's in this, like, sackcloth here, so what is it? Is sack boy in here? Oh yeah, okay. Yep, so this is uh, actually a prop that I shouldn't show, but it's something I have to work on for a film that I am uh, involved in, so yeah, I can't show that to you yet. Um, but see the movie eventually, um, and I will, uh, well, I'll tell you about it when I can. But yeah, I have to work on that. Anyway, um, Tustin, California. I have no clue what this could be. It's, I don't know what this box shape, oh yeah, okay. Um, we're doing all of our, uh, our big uh, friend shout outs today. Um, come on. Sorry. I'm glad I have my nail clippers here to help me out. But yeah, so this uh, was something that I ordered from a recent Facebook friend of mine, the producer David Sterling, who a lot of people probably know. Um, but he's the one who's responsible for these two uh, franchises. Um, and also there seems to be an added bonus in here, which is pretty cool. But he's known for um, the Camp Blood uh, film series here with this box, and it's in this uh, kind of cardboard box here. I love the designs there. Um, well, you know, got to keep your eyes on the prize right there. Um, but yeah, this is pretty sweet. I, I know a lot of friends who have this set, and so that's part of why I wanted to grab it up. And uh, we got all of the different Camp Blood films on Blu-ray here. Um, what all do we have here? We got um, Cam uh, Grind or sorry, um, Camp Blood Grindhouse double feature there, and it looks like it's in 3D there. Um, we got uh, Camp Blood 3 there. Now the problem is I haven't seen these, but it's like it's got clowns. You know, it's a uh, slasher throwback it's like you know come on you gotta love it and the artwork is really really great on all these they're very um very appropriate for the kinds of films that they are um so yeah i can't wait to dive into all these um but yeah i wanted to specifically get these so i could unbox them for you and uh, give david sterling a shout out there um but yeah, I'm really eager to check all these out. And I'm a big fan of Killer Clowns in general. Um, and I think uh, this will be a good ch uh, a good chance to uh, see what all they have in store for us on the independent film level. And uh, let's see. Where did my... My nail clippers seem to have disappeared. That's all right. We'll keep going. Oh, there they are. All right. Um, so I'm going to open these up for you. It's kind of neat that they are individually packaged here. Um, and, uh, yeah, we gotta, gotta always support indie horror whenever we can, and indie film in general. Um, ultimatebdheaven.com with this person on the inside. And, uh, yeah, so I know that there are a lot of people who have a fondness for this series, um, and I'm definitely eager to check it out. Sterling Entertainment is what it's uh, called there. Um, but, um, so we got a couple more things to look at because he's got another franchise, uh, the Axe Grinder Collection there, which I've also heard uh, good things about. I know a lot of people who have... Um, oh, that's cool. So this one has a little uh, insert. Just a little insert there. And that one does not have our little uh, guy, you know, creeping us out on the inside for some reason. Um, don't you think all the insides of Blu-rays, don't you think they need some creepy guy with glasses to stare at you? Um, I wonder if these uh, are all sold separately at all, or if they're just uh, in the box set. I don't know. Um, it's it's kind of the same design as the other one. Um one thing that we'll look at in a second is this one. It says the sci-fi classic Iron Thunder. And this was something that was just kind of thrown in here. Um, just to kind of vary it up, let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I 
wasn't expecting this, but it is something that uh, was just kind of thrown in there. Um, but eager to check that out. Um, yeah, Iron Thunder on DVD. Um, let's keep going. We got Camp Blood 5. Um, somebody in the comments should tell me how many slasher films are set at a campground. We all know about the Friday the 13th series, how popular those are, and how they all were set at Camp Crystal Lake. Um, but then the question becomes, uh, how many other slasher films set at a campground are there? Because I know that, um, Friday the 13th kind of came in off the heels of Halloween, um, but it did kind of popularize the campground as a location for a slasher film to take place in, and, uh, I'm curious if someone has ever done a tally of how many, um, slasher films take place in a campground. Uh, because obviously in the wake of Friday the 13th you had um, Sleepaway Camp, which is one of the other notable um, slasher franchises that takes place in a summer camp. Um, I'll provide a link to uh, David Sterling's website um, in here as well, in case you are interested in checking these out. Um, but yeah, I do love my creepy clowns. Um, do you guys remember back in 2016 when it was going to be like The Purge but with clowns and how there were all the, they were all these like unrelated sightings and nothing ever came of it? Um, I remember that. Which, it was kind of odd, but I think it was just one of those things that just kind of took hold. Halloween seems to produce a lot of like hysterias um, that are kind of, well, there, there's a new hysteria for each Halloween. Uh, it seems, you know, particularly, um, oh, this is cool. So there's his, uh, Facebook page, which I actually might put that in there instead, but, um, whatever it needs to be. Um, but, uh, yeah, it seems like with each Halloween that there's a new hysteria to worry about, um, or to get, for other people who are not me, to get freaked out about. Um, kind of like the, the razor in the candy apple thing, which, if it happened at all, which I, I don't even know if that really happened, but if it did, um, then you know that it was like, maybe it happened once and then everybody all of a sudden got freaked out, even though the chances of it having happened again would be so minute, uh, so astronomically low. Um, I like this poster, I think, out of all of them. I mean, I like all the posters, but this is a particularly good one. I would like to know who the artist is because um, there are some really good horror artists out there that you know they're the ones that do a lot of the Screen Factory collector's edition artwork and you know uh, do some t-shirts and cool things like that um, I would love to know who these people are and you know because they can really make a movie come alive I think um, so yeah that's the Camp Blood collection with all kinds of clowns and good stuff and uh, oh look at that we got David Sterling written on the inside. How cool is that? Uh, and I did tell him specifically that I would unbox uh, this for you. And, um, you know, let's just take a moment of silence for, you know. Yeah. Um, anyway. So next up is his um, Axe Grinder collection with a similar cardboard box um, uh, design here, which I have to say... Um, you know, I, I think it's one of those things where the cardboard here, it does feel very much like a normal cardboard box. It doesn't really feel um, like anything overly special. Like, it's sturdy, and had it not been for the designs on the cardboard, then it, you know, it wouldn't stand out otherwise. Now, the designs that are on there are quite good, um, but um, it is something that... Uh, I'm sure it was probably done for economic uh, reasons, but that being said, uh, these are all, you know, indie films here, and, um, yeah, this is, I guess, just a, uh, a two-pack here. Um, I don't know how many films are in this series, I think just the two, but also you'll notice that the box is open, uh, you know, there's quite a lot of space in there, so I assume that it could be kind of like what James Rolfe did with his uh, recent 
uh, AVGN BFG of Blu-rays set where there's some intentional um, empty space there so that way you can add to it as more movies uh, get released. So I would assume that that's probably the reason why, but um, at any rate, there is definitely room to expand here. So we got Axe Grinder and we got some more... Um, we got some more uh, Killer Clown action for you, and the second one here, well, let's look at the first one, first of all. Yeah, first time on Blu-ray there. Um, seems like it's kind of much of the same uh, type of thing, and of course, we got a headless guy, which, you know, that's always nice. Um, but uh, then we also got uh, the second one, which this one has Mike Ferguson from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s uh, Sean C. Phillips from the original Camp Blood, Donna Lee Hazing, Amityville Evil Never Dies, which Sean C. Phillips has, uh, his own YouTube channel called Cool Duder, which I will put, um, in the description as well, because he's another new, uh, friend of mine, and, um, he and I co-starred in a movie called Dark Web, um, called Dark, Dark Web Mystery Box, and, um, uh, once I get my copy of that film, I will show it to you, um, and we can talk about it some more, but, yeah, I'll, um, I'll actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'll just go ahead and provide a link, um, to that one as well, just because, well, why not, um, uh, and, you know, need to promote it, so, anyway, those are the two, uh, David Sterling box sets there, they're really, really nice, really well put together, uh, definitely hit them up on Facebook if you're interested, they're very well done. Um, I wondered what this was, this horizontal box, as I was like, I can't think of anything I ordered that would fit that. And last up, our dear friend, uh, JDC Outlet from Sweetgrass, Montana, a.k.a. Southern Alberta, uh, with some uh, inexpensive uh, films from Canada. So let's see what we got. Uh, which... Um, Again, I have to say, one of the best, uh, great service and great, uh, price points with some less common, uh, or, or with, uh, older Blu-ray Blu releases with really good prices. Um, what all do we have in here? Um, we got, uh, kind of a variety pack of, uh, different things. Well... The first of which we can knock out of the way pretty quickly because I did a uh, hint at it in a previous video. Um, we can already talk about this one, Seeking a Friend um, for the End of the World, and why can we talk about it? Because the slipcover came a couple days before the actual movie did, and um, so now it's complete. Uh, yeah, this was a movie that I remembered when I heard about it, it was something that I always wanted to see, and I never did. Um, the price point for this one was always pretty low, um, but I just never really pulled the trigger on it, but I'm glad that I managed to find it with this cool... I love these particular slipcover designs there. Um, I think they're really cool, and they're just... they spice up any collection. Um, and similarly, uh, because we are slipcover psychopaths on this channel, we have a uh, sappy romance here, The Time Traveler's Wife, which I have to say, which this is um, the back of, am I, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, I thought that this was raised, but I guess it isn't. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is another one that I hadn't really even considered getting, but it was, um, I want to say it was like four bucks or something on um, his uh, on his eBay store, and at the very least, the premise is kind of interesting as far as um, somebody that is involuntarily traveling through time, like his his physical body is, well, this is just from what I read, apparently his physical body is constantly jumping around through time and she's never sure when he's gonna return, uh, and so she has to take in all the time that she has, which I think is an interesting idea. No idea uh, how well it pans out, but, you know, I can think of dumber premises for a romantic comedy, or a romantic drama, I guess, is more appropriate for that. Uh, but this seems more like a rom-com right here. 
Uh, and I got it because, well, A, it has a slip cover. It was three bucks, uh, and I love Jason Bateman. And uh, I like Olivia Wilde, too, and she um, has recently uh, shown her stuff as a director, which, sorry to say, I still haven't seen the movie that she did. Um, and I can never remember the title of it, but I will see it eventually. I have a lot of friends who love it. <laughs> what is that movie? It's called The Longest Week, and I have to say I've never heard of it. Um, but again, three bucks with a slipcover with two actors I really like. Why not? The, the bar for entry is quite low, and so therefore the risk is quite low. Um, but yeah, and I, in addition to, um, it's another slipcover design that I really love. I wish we would get that in the United States. And, um, now here's a movie that I remembered actually seeing in the theater. And I felt bad that I ever sold this, um, because it's really, really good, but I got it back. And it was Chronicle, a fantastic found footage film, one of my all-time favorites, and a really good superhero film. An original superhero film, um, which is really, really cool. And the DVD's not in there, but whatever, I don't really care. Um, yeah, so the, uh, it's a really cool original superhero film. Um, I can definitely see why Josh Trank got picked to do the 2015 Fantastic Four, but we, as we all know, he seems to have kind of had an emotional or mental breakdown during that thing and then the studio reshot a lot of it and it became the notorious critical and commercial bomb that we all know it to be i didn't really hate that film but i also can see why a lot of people would um mostly because i appreciated the f what it was trying to be i think if that we'd have seen his vision for it would everyone have liked it maybe not but at the same time it would have been truer to what he was going for, which was essentially a body horror film uh, starring the Fantastic Four characters. And, you know, the tone was definitely dark and it was uh, not what, you know, you typically would have found in the Fantastic Four, but, and it definitely didn't come together the way that it should have, but I at least liked what it was going for. And we haven't really seen much body horror in the mainstream for quite a long time. Um, but yeah, Chronicle, uh, this kind of made uh, Dane... D Dahan, Dahan, um, it made him a star, and for good reason, because he's a great actor, um, definitely check it out if you haven't, and then, um, I've been big on, seems like I'm big on the rom-coms in this particular haul, um, especially ones that I haven't seen, like, uh, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, um, which I like Kat Dennings, and, uh, this is another one that shipped to me in this case that, now, this one doesn't say it has a DVD, but it's uh, shipped in a case that has an extra little slot for a disc, so I'll probably swap it out with something. Uh, anyway, yeah, I love uh, Kat Dennings and uh, Michael Sarah. I loved him in um, Arrested Development and Juno. Like, I don't claim to have seen him in all the things that he's in, um, but in those things I thought he did really well. Um, curious to see what pans out here. And then uh, we have one of the, uh, which I just realized the uh, amusing coincidence of these two films right next to each other because they're uh, the same filmmakers, um, but it is, uh, just making sure, yep. Um, so they're the same filmmakers and it's There's Something About Mary and Dumb and Dumber 2, which we already saw, um, Dumb and Dumber 1, uh, in a two-pack along with The Mask. Um, so now I've got both Dumb and Dumbers again. Um, now, it's a Bob and Peter Farrelly. Um, and I think it was Peter Farrelly, I can't remember, but it was one of them who went on to um, win an Oscar for having produced Green Book, which I am sorry to say I never saw. And I, I heard not great things about it, especially in light of, like, it, it gets put on a lot of lists of, like, you know, movies that don't really help with the, um, current d discussions about race and things. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but, um, I don't know. I haven't seen it for myself, so I can't really say, but, um, Dumb and Dumber 2 here. Um, you know, how was this? Um, it could have been so much worse. Um, I don't think it was amazing, but it could have been so much worse. Um, I think that the, well, the be very beginning of, you know, Harry, uh, or Lloyd, sorry, Lloyd having been in a 
a faked, uh, you know, state of insanity and, like, kind of, like, comatose for, like, over 20 years or, or 20 years, um, that did sort of stretch, you know, credibility, but at the same time, it is Dumb and Dumber, so, I mean, it's not, you know, meant to be too overly realistic, but, um, yeah, it wasn't, like, the best sequel I've ever seen, but it could have been a lot worse, and, um, yeah, uh, that's a... That's about all I have to say, but yeah, I love Jim Carrey, love Jeff Daniels, and they, they definitely slip back into their roles very easily. And there's something about Mary, which is one of the classic films of the late 90s, uh, and it definitely took the same kind of raunchy, uh, gross-out humor that they were doing in Dumb and Dumber, but it really blended it together with a very sweet, uh, love story, and, um, you know, definitely a breakout role for Cameron Diaz, even more so than The Mask. Um, great stuff for Ben Stiller and Matt Dillon, and, you know, it just, it's a classic. I mean, there's there's really not a whole lot else to say, but it's most definitely a classic in the way of comedy. Um, and then we got our last little pile here of little treasures from Canada. We got one that I've never heard of uh, called Quick, but it is apparently a Shout Factory release, and it's a uh, um, JDC outlet has a new section called um, you know Great Asian Films for however much. Um, so he does do these things where he separates them out into genres of like horror and sci-fi, and one of them is now you know Asian cinema. And I'm trying to get back my, like, martial arts and Asian action films and things, so, and it was really cheap. And then uh, another one, very similar, called BKO uh, Bangkok Knockout, with the slipcover, with that awesome, well, the awesome Canadian slipcover there. Have not seen this, I have to admit, but again, cheap slipcover, uh, expanding a genre uh, that I have been needing to expand, so I'm there. I'm pretty, pretty easy to please on that level. Um, and then uh, we got a movie that I have wanted to see ever since I first heard about it, because I love the cast, which was The Losers. And this is an awesome uh, Canadian slipcover design that's illustrated. It looks a lot better than the American one, which is just a photo. It, it looks like this, you know, the slipcover design just looks like that. Um, and that's not bad, but it's like, it's a lot cooler when, um, it's something outside of the norm, I think, and something that's different from the, uh, from the other artwork, and we got, um, you know, we got Zoe Saldana, who I love, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, uh, Idris Elba, um, it's, uh, screenplay by Peter Berg and James Vanderbilt, which is pretty cool, um, Chris Evans, uh, before, uh, Captain America, and, um, so yeah, and I just, I got it because A, I wanted to get it for a long time, and B, I just love that slipcover design. I think it's really, really cool and different, and that's what we like around here. We like cool and different, and similarly, we got From Paris with Love with John Travolta rocking that, uh, you know, freshly circumcised dick look, as, uh, as George Carlin would say, um, and Jonathan Rhys Myers, who I really love, because he played uh, Elvis in that miniseries on CBS back in 2005, and I've not seen this either, but again, cheap slipcover. Uh, John Travolta is an actor who, if regardless of if the movie's good or bad, he doesn't sleepwalk his way through a performance, so I'm curious to see what all that is in store, because um, again, I, I loved uh, The Fanatic as far as like you know, cheese-tastic fun, um, and then we got something that I remembered hearing about this, um, and I never, uh, never saw it, but it was the Vampire's Assistant, uh, Cirque du Freak, and, uh, yeah, I never really heard a whole lot about this, but it's got a great cast, people I really love, like, uh, Willem Dafoe, Selma Hayek, uh, Ken Watanabe, John C. Riley. You know, I love all those actors, so I'm very curious to see what all it entails. I remembered when this came out, but never really heard much about it. So, yeah, interested to check it out. But Salma Hayek, oh boy, she has aged so well. Um, and then got only two more. We got uh, something called uh, Deadfall there, which is another cheap like action thriller with a uh, slipcover that was cheap. 
And again, actors I like, Eric Bana, Olivia Wilde, Kate Mara, Treat Williams, who I've actually met, uh, Chris Christopherson, Sissy Spacek, and it appears to be sealed, so how cool is that? But yeah, I actually met Treat Williams because he came to speak at my, um, at my college uh, for one of my classes in filmmaking, which is really cool. And he actually um, provided a voice, uh, well, my, my friends and I were looking up his filmography at the time, and he, well, he played the bad guy in The Phantom, uh, the Billy Zane superhero film, and then also um, he had, did a voice on Batman the Animated Series, among many other things. Um, and then last but not least, we got Lockout with uh, Guy Pierce and Maggie Grace, which that's a pretty cool uh, kind of taxi driver-esque uh, design there, which, is that Sean Gunn? Kind of looks like him. Could very well be. Um, I don't know. Again, haven't seen it, but it was really, really cheap, so why not? And, um, you know, it's a unique uh, slipcover design there. Um, yeah, it doesn't say that that's James Gunn, or uh, Sean Gunn, but it looked James Gunn's brother. It doesn't say that it is, but it could very well be, or it could be any of the other people listed on the back here, but whatever. Cool cover, uh, something different, something cheap. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that, uh, that about does it for this time. Easily the standout items would be um, the stuff that I got from David Sterling, so please uh, check out his pages and such. So uh, if you like this, please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, set phasers to stun. Warp Factor 5, I will see you in the next video, which could be another unboxing or it could be another series of uh, overviews or the other wacky and weird things I've been doing. So just um, stay tuned and I will see you soon.